Let's begin this class with Megasporogenesis. The topic is Megasporogenesis. Previous class we discussed Microsporogenesis. What's meant by Megasporogenesis? The first question is what's meant by Megasporogenesis? Megasporogenesis is a process by which Megaspore is formed from Megaspore mother cell. Megaspore is formed. Formation of Megaspore from Megaspore mother cell. This Megaspore mother cell undergo meiotic division and it becomes Megaspore. Let's see how this Megaspore is formed. The development of ovule or the and the embryo sac. Here the question is development of ovule and the development of embryo sac. These two questions we are going to study in detail today. First question is development of ovule. As the ovule develops here, this, these are the diagrams which shows the development of ovule. As the ovule develops, there is a mass of new cells in the center. In the center of the ovule, previous class we discussed about the structure of ovule in detail. In the structure of ovule, the center part which is occupied by new cells. The new cells is present in the center of this ovule. As the ovule develops, few cells present at the hypodermis becomes elongates. The hypodermal cells elongates and becomes an archisporeal cell. As you learn microsporogenesis, their archisporeal initial is formed. Similarly, here there are few hypodermal cells enlarge and it forms as an archisporeal cell. The name of the cell is archisporeal cell. These archisporeal cells either it directly functions as the megaspore mother cell. Either it directly functions as my, my megaspore mother cell. Here the term is megaspore. Megaspore mother cell, megaspore. The, this archisporeal initial or archisporeal cell either directly functions as megaspore mother cell or it undergoes divisions. When it undergoes divisions, it forms primary parietal tissue or First it becomes the cell, the outermost cell, it forms as a primary parietal tissue and innermost cell, inner sporogenous tissue. When the archisporeal cell undergo division which forms two kinds of cell, one forms the outer region, another forms the inner region. The outer formed layer is called as primary parietal tissue. Inner layer is known as primary sporogenous tissue. These two cells are derived from the archisporeal cell. Then, or this archisporeal cell directly functions as the megaspore mother cell. Now, this sporogenous tissue. The innermost layer, inner sporogenous tissue becomes the functioning megaspore mother cell. So that if these two regions are developed, the primary parietal tissue and the sporogenous tissue are developed, this primary parietal tissue, the outermost layer which undergo periclinal and anticlinal division. As, as we mentioned earlier, the periclinal division, the division is parallel to each other parallel divisions to towards the tissue and anticlinal division this type of division anticline so it undergoes the primary parietal tissue which undergoes periclinal division or anticlinal division and embed this porogenous tissue 
here uh, if the archesporeal cell directly functions at, as megaspore there will not a division if it is not directly becomes the megaspore mother cell it undergo these two it undergo divisions and forms two kinds of tissue they are primary parietal tissue and in a sporogenous tissue when the division occurs now this primary parietal tissue again undergo divisions periclinal as well as anticlinal and forms sporogenous tissue it embed the sporogenous tissue inner to the new cells so within the new cells this sporogenous tissue embed deeply when it divides when the parietal cell primary parietal cell divides so when it divides this embed the sporogenous tissue inner to the ovule inner to the new cells then this sporogenous tissue so this sporogenous tissue becomes the megaspore mother cell when it undergo division sporogenous tissue becomes the megaspore mother cell or else archesporeal cell directly functions as megaspore mother cell now this megaspore mother cell which undergo meiotic division megaspore mother cell the process is megasporogenesis the name of the process is megasporogenesis process is named as megasporogenesis how megasporogenesis forms this megaspore mother cell undergo meiotic division so this megaspore mother cell undergo division what kind of division meiotic division to forms four different types of haploid megaspores these all cells are haploid n haploid megaspores are formed how many haploid megaspores there are four haploid megaspores are formed these haploid megaspores are formed as a tetrad there are four kinds of haploid cells formed they are arranged as a linear order this is the linear arrangement all these cells are arranged linear among this four towards the chala cell here in this ovule this is the micropylar end these are the chala cell end out of this four the chala cell end of the megaspore is the functional megaspore which is considered as functional megaspore remaining cells which degenerate remaining nucleus degenerates so it becomes the functional megaspore now from the megaspore mother cell functional megaspore is formed based on the number of this megaspore involved for the development of embryo sac there are three different types of ovule they are monosporic bisporic and tetrasporic there are four three different types monosporic bisporic and tetrasporic this is the development of monosporic development of embryo sac from this because they uh, from this functional megaspore the female gametophyte is formed the female gametophyte is otherwise called embryo sac now development of embryo sac is the next process now functional megaspore there are three different types monosporic bisporic tetrasporic if only one cell is involved for the development of embryo sac here the chala cell one if only one is functional among this four other three will disintegrate so the chala cell end the megaspore present towards the chala cell end becomes the functional one and this type of development is called as monosporic development the example of monosporic development is polygonum polygonum is the example one more question polygonum is the example of monosporic development of embryo sac then bisporic here this shows two nucleate stage that is bisporic bi represent two mono is single 
here the functional megaspore among this spore is only one so mo monosporic if it is bisporic among this four two megaspores which becomes or which involved for the development of the embryo sac for the development of the embryo sac two are involved if two nucleate is involved it's considered as bisporic development or bisporic type the example of bisporic is allium allium is the example of bisporic embryo sac development now sometimes there are some species all the four megaspores here all these four megaspores are used or involved for the development of embryo sac here all the four are involved then it is called tetrasporic so four means it's tetra tetra tetrasporic development the example is peperomia peperomia is the example of tetrasporic development of anther so this cell stage is called as four nucleate stage bisporic it's called as two nucleate stage tetrasporic is called as four nucleate stage so this is the development of ovule so in the devel uh, development of ovule now functional megaspore is formed now next process is development of female gametophyte or development of embryo sac here we are going to study the example the type of development is monosporic okay, we are going to concentrate the monosporic development of embryo sac how the embryo sac forms now the first cell of the female gametophyte is the functional megaspore now this megaspore undergo this megaspore now this megaspore undergo mitotic division so from the megaspore embryo sac will develop from the megaspore what is developed embryo sac the embryo sac is called as female gametophyte so female gametophyte monosporic development of female gametophyte here at first there are mitotic division taking place in the megaspore and it forms two cells so it forms two cells at first two cells are formed when it undergo division now these two cells are elongate these two cells are move towards the opposite poles this is the micropylar region this is the chalacel region so in the embryo sac in the ovule there are two regions in the orthotropous ovule this is the micropylar region this is the chalacel region so in this micropylar region and chalacel region these two cells are formed in the center there will be a large vacuole develops this is the large vacuole so this vacuole pulls these two cells towards the upper and lower region that means the micropylar region and the chalacel region now second division takes place in this cell there are uh, these cells divides twice so when it divides twice it produces four cells so it divides twice and develop four different cells in each side micropylar region four different cells are formed chalacel region four different cells are formed at first there is two cell stage the two cell present in the micropyle region as well as the chalacel region divides twice and forms four cells each out of this four cells three becomes among this four three cells forms as the egg apparatus egg, these three cells forms egg apparatus and among this four three cells which forms as the antipodals when you look at this diagram it shows very clear this is the micropylar end and this is the chalacel end 
this is uh, this diagram represents the development of monosporic embryo cell so here there are two region micropylar end and the chalazal end micropylar region at first when the megaspore undergo mitotic division it forms first it forms two cell both the direction here and there again these two cells undergo division twice and it becomes four different cells in each pole now out of this four among each direction each poles from the micropylar region which forms the egg apparatus and remaining three in the chalazal end which forms the antipodals so among these four cells first four cells were formed these four cells the three cells are formed as a synergid and the sender cells among these three egg apparatus these three cells these three cells are the egg apparatus here this cell is known as the egg this is the egg egg cell this one this is the egg cell and these two cells are the synergids here is the egg cell three cells are there among this four at first there were four among this four three forms the egg apparatus here the center one this considered as the egg and these two present at the side is known as synergid in this diagram also you can see it clear this is the micropylar region here three cells egg apparatus here the center one which becomes the egg and the cells two present at the side is called as synergid likewise here there are three cells three these three cells formed as antipodals these antipodals or these three these three cells are formed as antipodal which is present in the chalazal end now here this three cells only formed this egg apparatus as well as the antipodes remaining one the rest of the one among the four cell these forms as the polar nuclei in this region which is remains free in the free in it so it remains free in this region so this among this micropylar region the four cell the rest one forms as the upper polar nucleus polar nucleus which forms the upper polar nucleus this one forms upper polar nucleus and from here one is the rest among this four one forms the lower polar nucleus so upper region one polar nucleus and here from one remaining among this four cell which becomes the polar nucleus now two polar nucleus are present here in this polar nucleus either this polar nucleus is present as it is or these two polar nucleus fuse together when these two polar nucleus are fused together it forms as a secondary nucleus secondary nucleus so here it becomes the two polar nuclei how it develops the polar nucleus develops from these divisions when the megaspore undergo division first it forms two cell then these two cells undergo twice di uh, di uh, divides twice and it forms four among this four three becomes egg apparatus and antipodals remaining one one forms the polar nuclei now these two polar nuclei fuse together and forms as a secondary nucleus so now in this embryo sac there are seven celled stage seven celled stage with eight nucleus this monosporic embryo sac is seven celled stage how here egg apparatus consists of 3 plus here 3 6 plus 2 polar nucleus so 3 plus 3 plus polar nucleus polar nucleus is one polar nucleus here so seven cell 
polar nucleus, egg apparatus as well as antipodals there are seven and if these two polar nuclei fuse together and form secondary nucleus the secondary nucleus is considered as one cell so three plus three plus two polar nuclei means it becomes eight nuclei when these two polar nuclei fuse together it becomes one cell as a secondary now it is seven cell stage seven cell stage with eight nucleus I hope you understand this clear there are seven cell stage with eight nucleus and there is when you observe this diagram here another apparatus is there another structure is there that is the filiform apparatus here there is a specialized tissue called as filiform apparatus so this filiform apparatus helps the embryo sac for absorption conduction as well as the nutrition from new cells to the developing embryo sac now this is the developing embryo sac when it develops when the embryo sac is develops the nutrition is given through this filiform apparatus as well as it helps the pollen tube to reach the egg so these are the functions this filiform apparatus done so this in this way the monosporic embryo sac develops here the question is development structure of embryo sac this diagram is structure of embryo sac or the development of monosporic embryo sac finally there is a two uh, seven celled stage with eight nucleus embryo sac will developed from this mega from this mega development of ovary from the ovary finally embryo sac is formed so today you learned uh, there are two question first question is development of ovule this all the diagrams represents the development of ovule and this is the development of embryo sac development of ovule and development of embryo sac now next process is called as pollination now male gametophyte and female gametophyte is formed this is the female gametophyte or embryo sac now this female gametophyte after the formation of male and female gametophyte there is a process called pollination what is pollination transfer of pollen grain from and the to stigma the process and there are different types self pollination cross pollination and it is followed by fertilization so in the next class we are going to discuss the process of pollination pollination also is a important topic before enter to pollination you learn these two question that are microsporogenesis as well as megasporogenesis before the next class you learn these two question and draw all these diagrams thank you